Best manager you've ever worked under at Sunderland? A uh, full stop, to be fair, Dennis Smith. He was uh, he was brilliant, and I, I always say that basically, it, it's you know it, it was different then. We did you know it wasn't so much about like now they, they talk about the opposition and uh, they they go in deeply into everything. But we just concentrated on on our own team. There was never any analysis analysis, sorry, of the other the opposition basically, and. Uh, you know, we, it was just brilliant at building people up. A bit like I think the lads that I've spoken to, I think very similar to Kevin Keegan. You know, we just we always ran out the door, the dressing room door, and felt it could beat anybody. Uh, and we had a pride and a passion and everything that we did. And we're a great group of lads. But Dennis built on that, and uh, he was great with us as well. And I have to mention within that as well, Viv Busby's assistant, who was amazing as well. Just great people, people, persons. You know. Um, we just always felt like we could knock the door down basically and run out and beat anybody like sort of thing. So that, that they were the, they were my best times in football. So I had three years there where I scored, I think I scored something like 30 goals, over 30 goals, 40 goals nearly, I think in, in three seasons sort of thing. So they were by far and away my best years scoring goals. So, you know, that was with them. So yeah, they, they were great times. Yeah. Yeah. And he was- yeah. Go on. No, I was just saying he was really, really, you know, I was a fantastic manager and I've had some good ones later on in, in my career as well, but I always say he's the best that I've had, yeah. Mm, yeah, like basically every player who I've, on here, who I've had on here is back that. Managers who big players up and give them confidence and, and come across almost in a, in a friendly way, tend to get more out of players than the ones who try to be a bit more authoritative and, and clamp down on them. Is, is there many negative experience of managers over your career, like even Sutherland aside? Uh, yeah, I mean, full stop. I, I mean, there was quite a few. We had a lot of managers in that time, as, as we tended to, uh, tended to do. I mean, there were some guys that, yeah, that I just didn't see. Uh, probably the one I had the biggest problem with, to be fair, he made me captain and everything, was, was Terry Butcher. And I've said this before, so it's not like uh, I'm hiding anything. He, he was the complete opposite. He, he, went, he was a fantastic guy as a, as a man, as a, as a player. But when he got it, just management just didn't suit him. Uh, um, he, you know, he just went in on himself, and he, you know, everything was on a on a downer and a negative, and um, he he just made it tough for all of us. And I think the senior lad sort of seen through him, sort of thing. So uh, he wasn't somebody that I enjoyed playing for. I must admit, no. Um, is there anything in particular that you, you could put that down to? Well, he, he came in and tried to change everything uh, very quickly, which is fair enough. It was his team. It's what he wanted to do. But, um, you know, like I said, the, the biggest thing, in whatever you do in life, you, you have to be positive. Um, I, I feel any way to get the best out of people. And he didn't have that. He basically talked us all down. He actually did it. He had a big meeting, I think, after Glenet's, um testimonial and stood up and said he wanted to sign all the Rangers players. So you can imagine we're all stood in the room and he's telling that he's telling us that they're all they're miles better than us and he wants rid of all, everybody that's in the room basically. Um, so that was like stereotypical of Terry to be fair as a manager yeah. and like this old bloke who previously had been a player with us for a while um, and been brilliant. Um, but unfortunately, when he got to be a manager, um, I think he, he had a you know terrible run with Coventry when he'd been manager and this was his second experience and it it didn't go any better to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it can't feel good to be told that you want to get rid of your entire team. That doesn't go for, just for football, yeah. that goes for like every walk of life. You know, you, you want to feel wanted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, any manager you've got someone that's in charge of, you, you, you want them to be positive and to, to try and build you up and boost you and, and tell you that, you know, you, they, they want you there and, you know, encourage you to do your job as well as you can. And, and it's the same in football. Yeah. Were there any really tough moments either? early on in your career or throughout your career or before your career even started where you felt like packing in and thought football's not for me? Not really. I was really, really lucky, to be honest, because I, I, I basically didn't get any injury, injuries and we talked about the games that he had. I think by the time I was 23, I'd actually played 250 games or something. So it, it was, you know, later on in my career, I had some problems with injury. I think that's probably the biggest thing that would make, make you want to quit football. Everything else, I don't get anybody that whinges about, like, uh, having to go to hotels and be looked after and given nice food and, 
and all that. There isn't any downside to football at all. So you got to travel a bit, but so what? You know, anybody and you know, you get you still travel on a nice bus, and you know, probably have a game of cards, and you have a, a bit banter and crack with the lads on the on the bus. So I just don't see any downside to it. So you know, there was never a time that I thought I, I would like it. To kid playing till I was 50, but unfortunately, you know, the old legs and everything else jacked in when I was about 35, 36. So, you no, know, I would have loved to play forever, but that doesn't doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, it's quite interesting because I, I think a lot of players look at it differently. I mean, when I uh, uh, when I spoke to Matt Piper on here, uh, he said that he yeah. almost felt like giving up every week when he was like a, a teenager. If he had a bad game, yeah. it, it, it would put him back and he would feel down and think, oh, Football's not for me, but like different players have different experiences with it. Like a lot of people tend to say a similar thing to what you've said, where you say, you know, you just want to play football, and like there's, there's no reason why you wouldn't. Yeah, that's the way I felt about it. At the end of the day, is like if, until somebody tells you you're not good enough, or you, you know, or you, or the, you're leaving the club, or whatever, you, you know, you're a free transfer, or whatever it is. Uh, hey, it's the best life in the world or certainly one of the best lives in the world so why would you want to change it uh, you're just a lucky lad and you should appreciate it really is the way I feel about it but um, there you go yeah I mean different bit I do in, uh, in different ways but was there any like real post career struggles like coming to terms with your career coming to an end and having to move on or no I was pretty lucky that way as well I just I just basically in the last year of uh, my playing career, which was with Burnley, we were in the championship, and it was, it was uh, I'd, I'd basically looked after my brother. My brother was a player, and he was uh, he sort of went from he went from Bury to Oldham, and then to Sheffield United. So I'd done all his contracts. So I was sort of getting into being a, you know, like an agent sort of thing. I'd, I'd never had an agent really. I had an agent for a year. That was all. Um, when I played, and then it ended up not having an agent really. I just did everything myself. So a couple of the lads there sort of asked me if they'd look after their contracts and and it, it burned me a couple of the players like Richard Chappell, Robbie Blake and things. So uh, I got into it, got into it and just did it straight away at, um, after finishing. So, you know, it worked out quite well. So I was lucky in that regard. I know a lot of lads do struggle, but um, deciding what they want to do and obviously coming out of football and not having anything to do with it. And, and I think that's one of the things that should be looked at more Prevalently, really, yeah, because you know, I was really lucky that I did fall into something that was was okay. I don't love it, but it, it's not as good as football, that's for certain. But um, I was lucky enough to be able to do that, yeah. Yeah, was it a, 